welcome back to Assembly Winter 2016. I'm Raven, and with me again for this set is Lorinda. How's it going? Yes, yeah, going well, man. I really enjoyed that last matchup. And looking forward to Synthetic versus Techno Goose. And yeah, yeah, yeah see really what you're doing. Um, you, you're ready with these guys, right? You've got the ads? No, I'm waiting still. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, I'll poke them then. Um, so Techno Goose has got Paladin, Warlock, Shaman, and Mage. And Synthetic has got Warlock, Paladin, Mage, and Druid. And Techno Goose banned Synthetic's Druid, and Synthetic banned uh, Techno Goose's Mage. So I believe that was Tempo Mage we saw yesterday from Techno Goose, and we didn't yep. see Shaman. But you've got to you've got to believe that it's going to be Aggro Shaman. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like the only playable Shaman deck now. Um, people have tried to play mid range. Some have had a little bit of success, but they tend to be real Shaman specialists. Um, these two players, a lot of people won't be particularly familiar with, but they're both really powerful. Um, Synthetic actually made number one legend on the first day of the season, four months ago. Uh, I'm not sure if he was first there or not, but he was definitely number one legend at some point on the first day, so you can imagine he's in the first two or three to get there. And Techno Goose finished eighth on the ladder in August last year as well, so both of these players, really powerful ladder players. And uh, again, I just keep saying this, but I assume we'll be seeing more <laughs> of these in the future. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, so we're just getting synthetic to add you, Lorinda. And do you have the? Uh, do you have Techno Goose still from yesterday? I still have Techno Goose, just no okay. synthetic at the moment. Cool. The ad should be coming any second. So in terms of these bands, it's going to be uh, interesting. Druid, a pretty, pretty solid band, I'd say, because uh, Goose is running Warlock, I imagine, and probably not too afraid of the Paladin or Mage. Kind of interesting because with the Shaman Paladin and Warlock, the Mage. Uh, I'm not sure what Synthetic's Mage is. We didn't cast him yesterday, right? No, we didn't cast him yesterday. He was in the group that um, we did cast that group. We didn't cast his game, and so we didn't see anything of him at all. So we've got no idea what that is. We don't even know if the other players have got an idea what that is either. So it may be that he was banned out twice or whatever because we haven't got the 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 class by class results, just the scores. Okay, cool. So we should just be getting into the game pretty damn soon. Um, just tell the guy, have you got synthetic now? No. What? So I'll be able to see it from the other side though. I've still got techno goose. Yeah, sure. I'll just get him to add a... Oh, he says he's added you. What's your tag, Lorinda? I'll give you it. Hang on one second. A super organized stream. Yeah. <laughs> This is kind of difficult to um, to organise because we're obviously at home and these guys are at a LAN in Finland, so it's uh, you know not the easiest thing to like start uh, you know get everyone adding the right people in the, at the right time. But uh, one second, let's have a look. There we go. <clears throat> so yeah, we're looking forward to this one. Um, obviously, they're both having Paladin and Warlock, and then it's just Sh Shaman for Techno Goose. It's Mage for Synthetic, and we don't know what Mage that is. So. Every chance of mirror matches, and the order of picking will be quite important here. Because, at the start at least, obviously later on in um, Conquest it just doesn't matter. Yeah, it's um, definitely, uh, I think one of the opening things with Conquest is you pretty much don't try and mind games it too hard. You mm -hmm. do just pick a deck you want to start with and just go for it. Like, why not? Um, all I do is make excuses. Thanks for that model effort. <laughs> Appreciate it as always, mate. Uh, so these guys are just going in. Um, okay. Really interested to see what uh, what deck they start with because some of the matchups could be really wonky. We've not seen Synthetics lineup in terms of specific uh, decks. Uh, so you know, again, there's so much variance at the moment. I mean, we'd imagine it's going to be Secret piled in, uh, but then the Warlock and the Mage can be quite variable. We've seen a lot of Tempo Mage, seen some Freeze Mage from likes of Blackout, and then the Warlocks, Reno, Maligos, Zoo, you know, it's really all over and the show. And we saw that deck, sorry, yeah, and we saw that deck that wasn't any of those things from um, yesterday, and that was from uh, Maynard, who was playing uh, what looked like a Maligos deck without the Maligos. Um, yeah, I've seen uh, someone else, I can't remember who, but someone else was playing a deck, um... Uh, like that, which just didn't have the Maligos at all, which is interesting because like you, your opponent thinks you've got it right. Yeah. When they don't obviously already know from say previous knowledge or other players already telling them, but you know they've already got uh, they think you've got it, so they try and play around it, which can get really wonky when it's not actually in the deck. Yeah, and I've got synthetic now. He does need to invite me to watch, but awesome. at least that's fine. We've got half of it anyway. So we will go in as I just sort the old overlay out. And guys, I'm going to make excuses and say you can't edit the overlay 
on OBS without going onto the screen itself. So, meh. What 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 can I do? Hey. So it's a warlock mirror. Um, Sylvanas, boom, void caller, and imp gang boss on Technogus's side, and and I don't know on synthetic side. You're gonna have to call synthetic side for me um, till game two. Uh, it looks like synth uh, synthetic. Sorry, has actually just uh, sent invites, so you should have one. Cool. Um, so this looks like Zoo, actually, from Synthetic, now that we've got the cards, even though they're having some interesting moments here, getting in line. There we go. So it does look like Zoo. We see Double Juggler, Imp Gang Boss, Bran, and a Die Wolf is the opener. So pretty reasonable opener there from Synthetic. Yes. And, uh, but on the other hand, Techno Goose has his own Gang Boss into Void Caller. Uh, he doesn't have another demon to get like the value from that straight away. Uh, say, like a Malganis or a Doom Guard, potentially. But he's got a pretty pretty good hand himself, and the Shadow Flame's probably going to be pretty key if he can keep a minion on the board. Yeah, it's looking like um, the, the, the fast start of the Zoo deck has been negated here, and Techno Goose is now going to be able to play his stuff on curve, whilst the Zoo is actually the deck that's playing catch-up, which is not where Zoo wants to be at all. Uh, I can actually see hands and stuff now, so yeah. Synthetic's playing um, Gormok, which means that he is playing that really wide, spready zoo, which we haven't seen yet in this tournament. Yeah, and again, just just yet another variation on the decks, you know, that that we see, and um, and this now looks like Reno Lock with the uh, with the Moltons from Techno Goose that we did actually see yesterday a little bit of as well. So, um, this is kind of a very sort of swingy game here, like if. The zoo doesn't seem to have got away to a very fast start, although he's now going to play juggler and trade into the 1 1 to spawn another token. It really does depend on getting value from that Gormok, because other than that, like a 4 4 for 4, it's not horrendous, but it's not really good either, considering its ability to hit for 4. And with Brand's Battle Cry uh, doubling, it can actually just kill a Molten Giant, which is pretty yeah. nice. That's pretty crazy, and he is going to, uh, technically, he's going to have to find a way to just make sure the board doesn't get out of control, because this Flood Zoo does go nuts really fast as you can see here like just a normal looking turn and suddenly he's got the three minions which would give him every chance of getting to kill that molten giant as you suggested um, pretty soon and he's got to find a way of dealing with this damage it's going to be pretty hard work for the next turn or two yeah and uh hmm so if low Theb comes down now from synthetic it's going to lock out the shadow flame which is probably going to hurt. He does have Belcher, which is okay, but with a Lothab already on the board, it, with his, just a straight-up trade, feels pretty bad. Um, he can actually proc Gormok if he wants to. Yeah, getting that Gormok down next turn. If he, if he Lothab's now, it pretty much guarantee him a shot at that Gormok next turn. Or he could use it now to get rid of this Twilight Drake, um, but he hasn't got the brand down, so he'd want to set that up. Yeah, uh, I think... So I think you'll just see him go with Lothab. Yeah, the Lothab feels good because... Even, you know, if he played no minions this turn, his board is very, still very susceptible to Shadow Flame uh, yes. for, for a clear. So you just, when you play Lothab now, you just stop it. It just doesn't happen. Shadow Flame cannot happen next turn. Yeah, so he's going to do that. He's going to stop the board clear from happening. He's going to get nine face damage, plus whatever the juggle decides to do. And Techno Goose is going to be forced pretty much to just play Belcher here, unless he gets something that he can do with the Peddler. He's not going to be able to tap yet, and... Sludge Belcher just to slow down the pain, I think, here. Yeah. yeah, what do you actually like? Sludge Belcher, and then what? what's the trade here? Because Juggler's always scary. The Dire Wolf is providing four damage and is, you know, quite high value. Uh, and you can't kill the Lothab, so it doesn't look like he's going to make kill the uh, the Dire Wolf here to stop any, uh, or at least to reduce how efficient uh, the, the Warlock can, uh, can get rid of this Sludge Belcher and potentially push for lethal. Yeah, we saw him choosing, as you said, to take out that die wall to stop that damage from getting out of control. And uh, now it's just a case of how synthetic, how greedy he wants to be with Bran. Um, because next turn he can Bran Dark Iron Dwarf or he can Bran Gormok. And, but he'll want to play with the other one of those cards this turn most likely. So he's just going to plan ahead here and uh, set up a one turn lethal if he possibly can. He will of course be wary of the Shadow Flame. He knows he prevented that from happening last turn. So... He won't want to play into it this turn, which is kind of messy for him. Yeah, I was going to say, depending on where the juggles go, I mean, he could actually, uh, he could play what, uh, Voidwalker and then Gormok the 4-6, and if the juggles can potentially kill it off with the two extra damage. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. That's what he's going to go with here. Oh, and... oh he doesn't get the juggle. 
Yeah, that's going to play two minions. He goes for the life tap. He is on a lot of health, to be fair. Synthetic's only just dropped to 28 um, due to him hero powering there. So he's got plenty of time. And even with the, the Molten Giant, we can see that there's no Reno or Heal Bot. So there's really just, just nothing to really come out of this for Techno Goose. And this is looking pretty rough. Uh, Hellfire clears up... Um, everything except for the Gormok and does three to yourself and to think with a, a Zulok having four cards in hand, a five on their draw and a life tap, you've got to think they can probably pull out six damage. Yeah, and if one of those juggles had hit the face there, one of the extra juggles hit the face, he could have gone for the Molten Giant clear, but now he's having to not give up but he's now having to take so much damage that he must know that Zoo will probably be able to kill him next turn. Uh, he's just setting up the board in case the zoo doesn't have yep. stuff. But we can see Bran into Dark Iron Dwarf, amongst others, is going to finish this off. And, well, a, a, doom, a doom Guard is going yeah. to... He didn't actually have Lethal, he had 9, right? It was 9, yeah, yeah. he was 9. So the top deck Doom Guard just ends the game pretty quickly, and Synthetic getting a, a really good run there. And this is one of the um, the, the downsides, and it's, it really is a coin flip to a certain extent, where if you play a Reno deck, then it's amazing versus aggro if you draw Reno... But if you don't, you're in some trouble because normally you don't run too many other heals. It's normally like Reno Healbot is, is like the, the general use in Warlock. Maybe in Earthen Ring Farseer as well, but there isn't normally running too many. There are some lists that run like the Refreshment Vendor, but they're not too common to be honest. And that leaves um, Synthetic with only having to win with Mage and Paladin. And we, we don't know what the Mage is. I've discussed this with you several times about Paladin versus the Warlock and... Between us, I think we've decided to agree that it's about 50-50. Um, we, we both seem to favor the other sides of that, but certainly the Warlock doesn't get an easy win against the Paladin, um, yeah. unless it curves out. Again, it's reliant on the, the two key factors of A, having Reno, and B, being able to clear the board and almost just reset it, because the whole the, the way Paladin and the Secret Paladin normally wins is by building up that board, and it's just un, uncontrollable. Like, with all the combination of turn six, with all the extra secrets that come in, it becomes so difficult for you to actually clear the whole board, but Reno Lock can do it with, uh, you know, cards like Shadow Flame and Big Game Hunter really help towards actually getting rid of those big guys and just emptying the board completely, but you really do need that plus Reno, or at the very least a heal bot, just to stabilise, and once you stabilise for, say, a turn, and the, the Paladin then just has to build the board up again, you're, you're in pretty good control, because normally the Paladin's actually running quite long cards by then, unless they run a Divine Favour. Yeah, and we can see here they've both got starting hands they'll be happy with, to the extent that Synthetic actually gambled and, and got a better curve with his. Um, Techno Goose won't be upset with Dark Peddler and Swamp Poos in his opening hand. The Heal Bot will be handy later. The Dark Bomb will help him pick some choice removal at a choice time. So both these players are going to be happy with this draw. So we're going to get a, a fair fight at this point. Yeah, and I think we're probably going to see the Void Walker here. It's the, yeah, there we go. It's the most sort of just steady pick. Everything else is quite seemed to a little bit more aggressive. Uh, in terms of, say, like, the Wargun, but the Void the Voidwalker does some work versus Paladin, because a lot of their minions early on are either one or two attack, so, you know, it just soaks up a couple of hits and just seems a bit more, uh, you know, a bit more durable. Yeah, and he's got the, the the eternal decision here, what do you do? You play the Voidwalker first, probably, to find out what the secret is, but you're probably going to go face anyway, and always best to clear up these secrets as quickly as you can, even if it means trading in, you know, a mana disadvantage there. Um, Synthetic will be annoyed that he picked up the Secret Keeper after playing the Secret, but now he's drawn into another Secret anyway, and it is actually the second Noble Sacrifice, which Techno Goose probably won't realise. Yeah, there's an, also the option for... It feels a bit rushed because you, your follow-up play isn't super strong, but even just to coin uh, the Blessing of Kings and sort of demand an answer, you kill off the Voidwalker, um, and you've got a pretty beefy minion, and unless there's, like, Owl Dart Bomb, there's no like easy way to clear it for the Warlock. It looks like he's going to go for the uh, slightly uh, more reasonable and maybe just a safer muster play, but this gets locked down by uh, the Demon Wrath or even potentially a Hellfire. It does. Um, one of the great things about that when you've got the spiders on the board is you can, you can test for those cards, and because it's Reno Lock, you know they've probably only got one of each. And so if you can get the, you know, the Demon Fire to just trade with this... Scary looking board that actually hasn't cost much, then you can get yourself into a position later where you can start putting down your secret keepers, your other guys, and those guys taking two damage is actually a thing that you don't want to happen. 
And as you can just sort of make them use their AoE here, it really helps you later in the game. Yeah, and it does look like now Bless of Kings is going to hold on. And I think the, the overall plan for Synthetic here with his hand is to Bless of Kings this turn and coin into Challenger next turn. Uh, that's why he's chosen to hold on to that coin. And in all honesty, a lot of the times when you can play on curve and it's pretty safe, you normally do and just hold on for a like, bigger, more impactful turn later on, like the coin into Challenger on turn 5. Uh, if he wants to just Blessing of Kings, it'll be interesting whether he actually chooses to kill the Voidwalker or not. I think in, in a Reno deck, I think it's worth the risk, actually. Yeah, when you have that Keeper in your hand, you can definitely kill the Voidcaller if you want to, knowing that if something bad comes out, you can just keep it into a 3-3 and kill it later. Um, has he not got that? It's a lot more risky, and he's got to decide whether he wants to put damage. But putting damage against Reno is an art form. You don't want to take them too low too soon. You want to force them to Reno when they're on sort of, I don't know, somewhere between 12 and 18 life. To, so the Reno doesn't get the full effect, and you've still got some damage left over to win the game with. Yeah, and uh, what really, like, uh, there's two ways. There's, there's that way to play it, or depending on how fast your start is, which, to be honest, Synthetic hasn't had a, a super fast start, uh, you can actually just rush and just hope they don't have Reno, or hope that by the time they play it on turn six, they're so sort of uh, bogged down in damage and, like, just having to just get Reno out, then that you just put continue to push damage. There's Twisted Nether, which is going to be a good card a little bit later if this board continues to be big. But what uh, Techno Goose is probably going to hope for now is the attacking with the Imp Gang Boss into Big Game Hunter if, if the Avenge goes on to the Mysterious Challenger. I think that's probably the uh, the, the best way to try and just uh, slow this down a little bit. He's going for the Ooze. That's uh, interesting. It's interesting to me because I think that in this matchup, one of the cards that can ruin the Warlock really easily is Ashbringer later in the game. And so Techno Ooze must be really feeling the pressure if he feels the need to play the Ooze this early. Um, it's definitely a card I keep back to try and take down Ashbringer because you deal with the first lot of stuff, then you deal with either Dr. Boom or Tyrion. And if it's Tyrion, that Ashbringer is a real nuisance for you. And if you can get rid of that, then you know, you're quite often well away. And he's not in a particularly terrible position here, um, especially with that competitive spirit obviously buffing the Challenger up to 7-7 seven, seven for his BGH. So... A lot of play in this. Yeah, this is uh, what he's doing is he's gone for like the more guaranteed kill on the challenger, but this just gives a turn for pushing for seven, and then you have to spend three mana on BGH. But he does have Shadow Flame, so BGH Shadow Flame is a reasonable option. Unfortunately for Techno Cues, he can't do that and Molten Giant, so it's going to be a really tough choice now as to what he commits to. Because even with Shadow Flame, the secrets that are still up are Redemption and Avenge. So the Shadow Flame will drop down, and you still have to deal with whatever comes out of the Shredder, and um, the and the the Creeper as well. So uh, as well as the Redemption, it's going to be kind of awkward. So the chances are he's going to have to BGH first, yeah. Um, see where the Avenge goes, and then hopefully for him he'll get to Owl, either the Shredder or the Spiders, I think. Um, Do you not think he's going to Shadow Flame here? If he BGHs, the 7-7 seven, seven comes back as a 7-1, and then as long as the Avenge doesn't go on the Shredder, you clear everything except for the 2-1-1s one, okay. and the Shredder token. I just think that feels like the the best way to reduce the damage down enough, because you know competitive spirits know, so you know those tokens aren't going to get buffed this, uh, you know, like the following turn. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense, actually. Uh, my play's particularly greedy there. <laughs> uh, he has seen... He has seen the um, Blessing of Kings, and there's usually only one in these, but some people still play True Silver. It's And, yeah, he's just going to do what you say. Yeah, he, he got the Avenge as well, which was key. He got the Avenge he wanted, which was not yeah. on the Shredder. And you know what? That Lightwell, pretty good for Techno Goose, actually. At this moment in the game, it's like, you heal for all you want, piled in, as long as you're not hurting me. Now he can get a very easy Molten Giant and uh, anti kill, but off if he wants to. Yeah, it's all about how he wants to do this Twisting Nether. Um, he may choose to do that first so that the Molten Giant's going to dominate the board. Or he may choose to do the whole Zombie Chow Molten Giant buff them, save my Twisting Nether for for emergencies, because he'll have something like Iron Beak Twisting Nether into Tyrion later. Yeah. So that's the choice he's going to make. Yeah, I think he's gonna, he is going to go for the Molten Giant Healbot here, because it puts so much on the board. Your opponent's only on one card. We can see that card is the Keeper of Alderman, so this Molten Giant's probably going to get uh, made a little bit smaller. But uh, in this way... Like, Twisting Nether on this board, there's no real threats down, right? Whereas if you twist in Nether when they play, like, Dr. Boom or Tyrion, 
uh, and maybe have a couple of other minions on the board, it, its value suddenly goes very, you know, increases quite dramatically. Yeah, the number of cards that actually beat Techno Goose here is getting very small indeed. And as the game goes on, he's even going to be able to probably Farseer and buy himself a tap or two um, after he deals with this, which isn't a particularly, as you say, it's not a particularly scary looking board. And he should be able to tidy it all up without using his key cards. And then he'll just be able to tap his way into victory, knowing that he has the Twisting Nether Owl back up to deal with Tyrion. Yeah, this is really nice for Techno Goose, because also bear in mind, he hasn't played Reno yet. And every single turn that goes by when you can whip uh, taps in now and again, he's he's nearly halfway through his deck. And, you know, every single turn is a turn the more likely that he's going to draw Reno. And the second Reno comes down and the Paladin doesn't have a Divine Favor and he's literally top decking. The top decks from Paladin can get a little bit grim. I think there's still Secret Keeper left and, like, a, another Haunted Creeper, which have such, like, low impact late game. Wow, and there's Dr. Boom, which is a pretty damn good pickup right now because... The one thing he was lacking, which he didn't need, but he was lacking it, was some pressure. And now the Doctor Boom will enable him to put as much pressure on as he wants. And yeah, as long as he makes sure that he's not within true silver range, then Doctor Boom will become a really difficult thing to deal with. Yeah, and the issue now is well, because Synthetics actually um, hasn't gone as aggressive as he could have been on that board. Then he actually chose to just you know th throw a few minions into a. Uh, into like the gang boss as well which doesn't seem as big a threat as it you know to, to require you know a, that much damage then it, it's just slowing the game down even more and the slower the game goes for the paladin as we said the harder it gets because there's just not many not many outs like you said there's not a lot of um not a lot of ways you can actually win now yeah we haven't seen anyone play ragnaros in this tournament either so there are some paladins on ladder that play ragnaros as an extra threat but He's running low on cards. I'd be surprised if Ragnaros is in here, but this is it. He's all in, and now Techno Goose can actually see exactly what he's up against. And when you can see exactly what you're up against, it makes it so much easier to plan your, to plan how you're going to clear up and what you're going to do. Yeah, I mean, he could actually just uh, what? Hmm. Hmm. I'm waiting up. Like, so the secret is get down, right? Oh, it's Avenge. Okay. Maybe he just attacks in, does seven to face, and twisting nethers. Is, is there a I better... think he'll be trying to avoid that just because he can still lose to a top deck Tyrion, but it may be that he has to do that. Um, he may be able to get stuff out of the Demon Wrath. Maybe he'll kill something first to see where the um, Avenge wants to go. Maybe he'll have to Owl the Avenge, but I, I think he'll probably try and use the Demon Wrath, although he may not be able to. Yeah, it's definitely going to depend on what Tenogus draws here. Um... Oh, Lothab came down, so he can't twist in there. What am I talking about? Um, so, this is looking more like just Belcher than Ring. Maybe even the Owl, depending on what the uh, what gets avenged. Yeah, it's looking like that to me as well. He'll probably see, yeah, like you say, depending what the Owl hits, he doesn't want to have Ooh. to... He First doesn't want to have to silence stuff. Um, well, the thing is, he can... So, the Paladin's top decking, and if the Warlock can hit Reno before the Paladin hits um, hits Tyrion, or very yeah. close to, he can afford to twist in another Tyrion, and when you're on full health as the Warlock, and your top decks are generally more powerful than the Paladins after Tyrion, then you can afford 15 damage, right? You know, like over three turns. Like, three turns is a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So you can, like, 15 damage from the weapon doesn't become that, that scary when you're on full health, and the board's effectively clear as well. Yeah, he's got plenty of taunt as well for the foreseeable future consecration would be messy for him here but that's oh, about it that's a reasonable card i've heard this card's pretty good we should play that for the whole of the next year in my opinion <laughs> so like synthetic has drawn there like one of the two cards that can actually win in this game uh so there's dr boom but the issue is he's just going to run his own boom into it uh and then probably uh, well probably we'll see demon wrath feels good it does damage uh, all his minions as well or he can Siphon yeah. Soul. Maybe he keeps Siphon Soul for Tyrion. So he's probably going to look if there's a way that he can defend his own minions here. Using maybe the defender to buff things and how that works out. But yeah, he's actually going to keep his 7-2 alive. 
Yeah, because suddenly you're pushing for damage now, and because the uh, Lightwell's dead, the Paladin's not healing anymore, and Paladin, outside of a, a true silver in this deck normally, uh, doesn't really run any healing, so once you've done that damage, it's, it's staying there uh, most of the time, so pretty reasonable. We might even just see uh, a few clears, like uh, we can see on Thial there, and then maybe just Defender Vargas on the 1-2 uh, the Sludge and the 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So this is nice. You're creating um, a pretty reasonable taunt wall, considering what's on the board. The bombs cannot kill you. Um, and it... Oh! Oh, oh no! Oh, God, the bombs can screw you, though. Uh, when it one goes to boom, Synthetic's probably going to be a little bit upset about that. And this is the issue now. The board's not threatening whatsoever um, on Synthetic's side. And he's just drawn a Shredder. Like, what's a Shredder going to do? You know, nothing. Because he's... Is he just dead next turn? Uh, he's very 15. close to it's do 15. it, yeah. And, I mean, Synthetic's going to have to try and kill the boom by running his boom bot in here. And, yeah, he's just picking a target. And I'd be very worried, because the boom bot failed him last turn. Okay, at least it killed off a taunt. It's a little bit... Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Never mind. <laughs> so that's pretty much the end of that. Um, very, very short deliberation. Of, can I afford to only be on 15? Of course I can. It's more than 13. Right, let's go. Yeah, um, and it is just going to be, be full one, smoke. One, almost certainly. He might even just kill the one one here. I don't know. Yeah, I don't mind this. It makes the uh, the shredder almost have to run in to you know stops like muster uh, coming down and killing off the uh, the two two with the one one as well. And so there's going to be paladin on each side remaining. Uh, Synthetic's going to have mage, and Technogoose is going to have the shaman deck. So it's, we really need to see what that mage deck's going to be. Um, but both of them are going... It's going to be interesting to see, because the Paladin versus Shaman match is really interesting, depending on the exact build as well. Um, slight changes in your build can make a massive difference to that matchup. Yeah, and it's like, um, for example, like the in that matchup, the Cog Hammer's so, so big. I know I know you played double Cog, uh, cog mm -hmm. Hammer in, uh, in Secret Paladin, right? Um, yeah. And like uh, versus the aggro shaman, if you can get a, a half decent cog hammer down, then suddenly you're feeling pretty good. Although I've run into some uh, aggro shamans running double earth shock, which kind of is upsetting. Yeah. But <laughs> there was, there was a long period on ladder where people were just using those two decks to adjust to each other. So double cog hammer came in, then double earth shock, and then you know if you got really greedy and you really run into shamans, you start playing a Harrison or something, and. As we see, Mage is going to be... Tempo. Uh, tempo Mage. So this matchup um, can go in Tempo... I think Tempo Mage is slightly favoured here. Um, mm -hmm. They have a lot of ways of dealing with the low health minions from the from the Paladin. Uh, but Tempo Mage definitely has the ability to whiff like pretty hard. But as we can see in Synthetic's hand, Double Mad Scientist is pretty reasonable opener along with a uh, Arcane Missiles to clean up any muster for battles or anything like that. Yeah, and in this matchup, um, I keep saying about the secret paladin thing, but if you're ahead against paladin or going into turn six, you're quite often in a really powerful position to win the game. And what tempo mage does best is get to the board and hangs on there. And so that's the reason it's such a decent matchup for the mech uh, for the tempo mage. Yeah, techno goose has a, a nice hand uh, for for like the the more mid game. Uh, which is going to be probably too slow. There's a card camera that we were talking about earlier, but the, I mean, this is just rough because there's just not even really a problem in playing the oh, wow double sorcerer now. Uh, so dropping a sorcerer, running the uh, scientist into the one one, pretty reasonable. We might even see we are we're probably going to see muster on the scientist. That's mm -hmm. probably the safe one. But with a second apprentice and then a uh, an arcane missiles is. You're feeling yeah. pretty likely that you're going to be able to clear up. He might just arcane missiles first, and uh, so he can ping as well. Yeah, he'll do that and just make sure he see what he wants to do with the ping because the sorcerer doesn't help zeros go to less than zero. Mm -hmm. And he's decided that he's hit enough things, and so he's just going to keep putting stuff on the board. And he's actually going to go face there and not even worry about the likes of Blessing of Kings and stuff. Yeah, I think the fact that he drew that Yeti means that if he wants to put, like, if he wants Goose to, like, just put uh, resources into killing these three twos. Because uh, they are a huge threat. Like, imagine if Flame Waker came down next turn with some spells for free. Like, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be really rough. So he does have to deal with at least one of these. Uh, what are the secret? And the secret's a mini bot. So he kills off the um, the the one of the three twos, the gold one, of course, by the looks of things. Because you know you've got to kill off the uh, <laughs> the, the gold one. 
Um, but, you know, he's just gained a 2-2 Divine Shield that he can now easily deal with. Yeah, and what do you think about having this Yeti in the deck? I mean, Mech Yeti obviously combines well with the Flame Waker and stuff, and that's why it'll be in there, but it's, I haven't seen it so much. People tend to favour something like the Water Elemental these days, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, there's so, there's a few, again, like a lot of decks are having like slight variations, so um, it'll be interesting to see what he's cut from this. He is playing the Antonidas, which isn't always included in Tempo Mage, uh, so obviously the the spare part, this is something we saw a bit earlier on when Tempo Mage was uh, becoming a lot more common, was, you know, you play these, and made some, some decks even played Clockwork Gnome, uh, to just to get more spare parts to combo with Flame Waker and Antonidas. Um, but yeah, there's so many options, and... I suppose it's based on how relevant you think the weapon classes are going to be in a tournament that you're going to play in. Because um, uh, the War Elemental can just lock out uh, like Warriors, for example, pretty hard. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think Strife Crow originally was the one who was playing so many mechs in the Tempo Mage variants um, just to get all the synergies. And obviously um, that was played by a lot of top players. But that, that's the guy I remember really playing it a lot on stream and sort of owning this style of play. And as we can see here, that getting this board for synthetic is just so hard to get rid of. Uh, Techno Goose's hand is like a good looking hand, but he doesn't have the time to, to clear up all the things he wants to clear up here. Oh, well, that Frostbolt is actually pretty big now because the issue synthetic was about to run into was that, well, he has Flame Waker Ping this turn, which doesn't feel great. Um, whereas, you know, he's got the Thorison and then into. Antonidas, but no spells to actually do anything with that. So this Frostbolt's going to do some work now, uh, along, along with the Flame where you can keep the tempo up, because otherwise, if he didn't draw something that actually had a, sort of maybe a bigger impact on the board, then the Mysterious Challenger into Dr. Boom can suddenly get a little bit scary. But Tenogus is on 14 health, so suddenly, like, just two fireballs become quite the threat. Yeah, you can get one fireball from a spare part on Antonidas. Um, and now he's got a decision to make whether he wants to just play the Emperor and reduce that Antonidas or whether he wants to see what the portal fancy is doing. And the fact he's going to, or he's considering going face now, to me suggests he's not worried about the portal, he's just going to drop the Emperor. Which makes uh, a lot of sense because then next turn would be Antonidas and the portal and get the fireball and then yeah, what does your opponent do? Yeah, true. Um, that probably f uh, feels a lot better because one of the options he could do is he's attacking in and he doesn't play Emperor because he wants to ping off the 2-1 and save the competitive spirit on that. But, again, you weigh up that is it comp spirit that's down? It is, so there's no repentance. Yeah, and this is two turn lethal for Synthetic, so... He'll, he'll play this, then next turn he'll be able to Antonidas and Unstable Portal. And that will set up so many things. And he, he's not looking at dying anytime soon, so he can afford to to do that. Because first of all, Techno Goose needs to take the 6 off the board. Um, otherwise he'll die to the Fireball. Yeah, there's, uh, um, there's... What's good about this play is that Techno Goose, although has a good amount of power on the board, um can't really do much with that power because that what now 10 9 will need to go into clearing these minions right you emperor has to yeah. die and then he has to run the weapon i imagine we're probably going to see the weapon into the flame waker and then the juggler belcher maybe to just to get as defensive as possible yeah and that's what we are going to see uh, i think he just took a second to make sure that he didn't need the spare part there and but he can still defend for a while as he's going to get 17 damage. He's offering 16, oh. 20 damage, but... So that's just game, right? Yeah, he's... Technogus will know that 20 isn't happening. He's just going to Antonidas and Unstable Portal, right? Yeah, with the draw into the um, into the Fireball, it wouldn't have even mattered anyway about the spare part because the uh, the Portal gets him the the Fireball for next turn. They can just play double Fireball. And the Emergency Coolant actually just makes him even safer. And that's definitely sealing the deal when uh, when the 10-4, like, the majority of your power and your big hitter on the board just gets frozen and there's actually nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and Synthetic, playing that you know, very sensibly, very carefully, going to take a 2-1 lead. And all he's going to do is have to find a win with his Paladin deck, which we know is a secret Paladin because he played it in his match already. And he's going to get a chance against the Mirror. And he's also going to have to face Shaman, which... Um, he Did we see Karkham? We didn't see Karkham in his deck, but we presume he's playing at least one, so... Yeah, that I, think, could be... I think you sort of have to presume one Karkham. He might not be playing it, because obviously we not, didn't see it, but um, there's so, you know almost all the variants of Secret Paladin run at least one, I would say. 
Mm -hmm. So that will be somewhere between uh, around even, I'm happy to say. Although I, I still feel it favours the Paladin. I know you feel it favours the, Sh the Shaman. So we'll have to have a side bet on that one. <laughs> So that is Synthetic taking that game, and uh, I'm guessing these guys are going to queue pr pretty quickly. Um, what? So what do you lock in here as Techno Goose? What, what are you fancying? As Techno Goose, I think I just put up the pally um, and just get it over with. It's Actually, no, I think I queue in the Shaman because I want to play the game under pressure that's the easiest, so I want the Paladin when I'm under pressure in game five. Um, gone he's gone with the, with the Mirror. Itself, so. Everybody's favourite mirror. We saw yesterday Orange um, mulliganing away all of the late game stuff and just going for the early game in this. And we saw his opponent keep a shredder, which ended up being played when he was miles behind. Yeah. Um, Orange winning that game pretty much on the mulligan. Yeah, and it's looking like Techno Goose, at least until we see Synthetics Mulligan, is looking pretty good here. The mini bots, the, you know, like always nice. He's on the coin. But also, and probably most important, unless, yeah, Synthetic hasn't drawn a Secret Keeper to counter the Secret Keeper of Techno Goose. So the second you drop down the Secret Keeper and your opponent doesn't have one within the first turn, you're feeling pretty good, even if you don't have secrets yourself. Because any secrets your opponent does have after that is played. Well, they just won't play them unless they can like somehow kill the secret keeper, and it's become such a priority target that when you go secret keeper into mini bot, and it can even potentially coin into keeper of Alderman, it snowballs so fast that like one minute they're like, well, I need to kill the secret keeper because it could grow very quickly, and it's stopping me potentially playing my own secrets. But then it's like, well, I'm you know shielding mini bot's a pretty reasonable card I've heard as well, so that kind of needs to die, and the attention splits so much that the paladin um, on the receiving end of the secret keeper opening can just get overwhelmed really quickly yeah and um, Techno Goose just needs to top deck one secret and all of that not only will it snowball but it will be even impossible to get going at least at the moment Synthetic can try he'll have to lose the Divine Shield which means that the mini bots will trade badly for him as you've just described but luckily for him at least Techno Goose has not drawn a secret to just buff that to 2-3 which makes things really difficult as opposed to just difficult especially yeah, on the really... coin i mean imagine if he had knife juggler coin like noble sacrifice like the game just ends right yeah and that would just be the end of it he does have um repentance here which isn't that in fact none of these things are actually that much use he's going to play the repentance but um it's more as a, a desperation play for something to do here because his hand won't have time to play it on turn four or five as that's a fairly natural curve uh, so he's just going to play it to try and get it out of the way. Yeah, and also by not playing both his secrets, what he's doing here, by creating two targets, he's making Techno Goose think about Avenge, Redemption, you know, a mixture of options. And he chooses to try and play around Avenge here and actually kill the minibot. Uh, whereas if that was Redemption, he would probably be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, but, you know, you can only play around, you know, X amount of things, right? You've got to do one or the other. But he is looking pretty good. He missed the juggle and now the juggle's on one so oh. at least repentance you know got the you know got a kill on the uh, juggler for free there yeah what do you think about that play because he could have played the mini bot first there to to protect his juggler but he chose to put the juggler down first um do you think that was a slight misplay or do you think there was um, a good reason to keep your mini bot on two two i think he just wanted the juggler uh, the juggle sorry from the mini bot. Mm -hmm. If you played the mini bot first, he misses a juggle. And when there's like a 1 1 on the board, or if there was a redemption on the mini bot, getting the juggle onto the shield is really good, right? So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, I think so. it was just to, you just take the risk on the juggle, because missing juggles never feels good. To play around like a repentance that even if you'd done it, you know, like look at the board mm -hmm. now, the repentance hasn't ruined him, right? So he's probably feeling, still feeling pretty okay. He has Belcher and, and then Creeper Blessing the Kings to follow up. On the other side of that, like if, if he's not in that much trouble, if he misses the 1-1, one, one, maybe he didn't really need to try and shoot it in the first place and he could have a juggler on the board that might be more important later. Just a thought. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I don't like to criticise the players that I'm commentating on because they're there for a good reason. Um, anyway, he's now just snowballing this up with his blessing and Avenge, obviously, the right thing here because... You Even have one mana spare? Yeah, you have <laughs> mana spare, you have two minions that are looking dangerous, so what, what more yeah. could you want? Drawing into I was just going to say, this 7-5 now won't get punished, because there's nothing Synthetic has, but drawing into the Keeper of Alderman, pretty reasonable. 
and he can now get off the secret as well. So the secret keeper actually trades with the mini bot. The keeper of Alderman trades up with the other keeper of Alderman, um, and that's that's pretty reasonable. And he doesn't know what this secret is now because this has been held on to for a while. Um, he knows it's not repentance more than likely. It's uh, and he does attack with the three three first to play around get down. Yeah, and it all depends how if he thinks he's had that for a while. If he if he's observant and knows that that's been in the hand a while, which you would expect. He may have been able to predict it was competitive spirit just because that's the one that you wouldn't have put it down early. Um, as you wouldn't have wanted it, you know, your 1-1 one, one to turn to a 2-2 two, two and just be wasted, but... That's like double the amount of stats, though, Lorinda. <laughs> <laughs> double your minion at no extra cost. Sick yeah. card. Um, so Mysterious Challenger comes down uh, slightly off curve on turn 7. Uh, Noble Sacrifice, Avenge and Redemption, the, 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 the normal set of 3 you're going to see, uh, are down now. The 5-5 five, five goes in just to uh, soak up that get down. And Although this has looked rough for Synthetic, he's not under too much pressure health-wise. And Techno Goose Hand is quite passive now. And this is where you top decks as the Paladin start to get a bit grim. When you top deck in a Secret Keeper... It feels kind of bad, right? Whereas, like, Belcher's okay, but looking at this board, it's when it's going to be followed by Tyrion from Synthetic, this can get uh, this can go the other way pretty quickly, I think. Tyrion's going to put in some work here. Yeah, Tyrion's obviously pretty crazy in the mirror because he does so much damage, he eats up so many cards. Um, obviously, taking down the shield usually costs you a card, then he kills a guy, then you have the Ashbringer that takes down two or three things, or does 15 damage. And Techno Goose Ooh. having to go face here. Oh my goodness. So when Techno Goose, his last draw was Secret Keeper and Synthetic's most recent draw is Dr. Boom. Yeah. And even even Consecrate as well. With, with you know In the Paladin Mirror, the, the because of cards like Muster, Secret Keeper, Creeper, etc. Like, Consecrate can do a lot of work and be quite high value later on, as well as early game. So having the Consecrate there as well as just a backup after Tyrion and Boom get played... It's um, it seems seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of sadness in the community that we won't be seeing Mini Bart and Muster and all those lovely cards for that much longer. I think I think people are pretty sad they won't be seeing those great cards. Um. <laughs> yeah, and now he's had to run in the weapon and Lothab to get rid of that Tyrion. There's 14 damage straight on the board. I actually think Consecrate's reasonable here because if you Consecrate, like. How does how does the Tenno Goose kill the nine five? Uh, yeah, that seems fair. I I'd have been tempted to just boom anyway, but that's because I'm greedy. But yeah, how does he just yeah. do this next turn? Well, he's over, dead. So. Yeah, he's just dead, right? Uh, this is a. Uh, has he played two keepers yet? He's definitely played one. Yeah, I think it's just one, and then we saw the keeper get keepered from Synthetic. So. Yeah, so he might have a second keeper, but even then, like, how does he deal with everything else? Yeah, he just can't win. Yeah, this is a hell of a lot of pressure, and Belcher. Is he uh, enough looks now like that he, he buys lost? You time, but yeah, Belcher actually buys him uh, a little bit of time because he but chose to muster, but fix the problem, right? Because we're just in the same position, except next turn those three ones are do one ones are Doctor Boom instead. So it doesn't actually solve the problem. It's he's going to be in just the worse position next turn than he was this turn. Oh, and he even has Juggle, J Juggler Boom now. Pretty pretty reasonable. <laughs> Interesting, they choose to put the damage on the nine five as you know consecration is. Not yeah. an out. It's just not an out because yeah. a boom bot hit you yeah, in the face. Exactly. So just, there's just no out. This is fine because he just guarantees three juggles to face that aren't wasted. Um, and like again, there is. I don't think there's any top deck in the game that uh, that, that sorts techno goose out here. And that is it. And that's synthetic taking the series three one. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff as well. I'm showing also how he managed to get day one legend. Um, before he plays pretty fast, he plays pretty aggressively, and he obviously knows what he's doing. So he'll be through to the semi-finals. Yeah, and just again, like to, looking at his lineup, he played. Uh, oh, hang on, because we've seen so many sim similar classes now. Uh, Synthetic played the Zoo list, right? He played Zoo. Um, he played Tempo Mage, and he played Paladin. Yeah, and all three of those decks can just be super quick and super punishing as well. If any of those three decks get like. Uh, the quick say turn one turn two start because they're so aggressive like the game just ends like that's really rough so interesting lineup choice his fourth deck is druid as well so um nothing i would say in terms of his deck choice is too flashy but they're definitely decks that can get the job done and obviously we're seeing that yeah that's an interesting thing it's probably one of his bigger lands that he's been to um if not the biggest and 
it, it, it makes sense to not put anything um, that's going to be too easy to mess up. You don't know how you're going to react first time. I remember speaking to Ryzen when he played one of his first, his second big event, and he was saying that he was happy to bring some of the more simple decks plus Rogue because he knows that inside out. Yeah. Just so that he was more comfortable playing with, you know, just so he didn't have to put too much more pressure on himself because you don't know how you're going to react your first time out there. And, you know, if he asks around, people will tell, you know, your first time there is hard. No matter who you are, most people find it difficult to start with in your first land. It's just different to playing online. Yeah, and let's be honest, like, however much people, uh, a lot of the community or player base may not like decks like Secret Paladin, it's one of the most powerful decks. So if you want to go to a tournament and win, that's one of the decks that, uh, you know, is a definitely a strong option to take and, and has a good likelihood of performing. So there's definitely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So Synthetic is going to go through. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break while we get the next match set up. So we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and stick around.